What's up? This is Nate Harvey, Executive Equipment Specialist with EliteFTS.com. Today we're going to show you how to coach the box squat. The most important thing when you box squat is having proper box height. This is one of the things we see uh, messed up most often. Um, so to do that, set your box up. And then you're gonna stand over the box as if I was about to squat. Make sure your feet are out wide where they should be when you're actually going to squat. And all, all I do from there is sit back onto the box, make sure I have a perpendicular shin angle, and then look at the height of my leg, okay? So if I turn sideways a little bit and we were to draw a line from my kneecap to the crease of my hip, that line should be parallel with the floor, all right? Proper box height has nothing to do with your knee angle, okay? Um, from there, now I know I have my box height set correctly. The next thing, the biggest mistake we will see is not your feet not being wide enough. So when we're working with athletes or someone new to box squatting, there's two criteria I go by for feet width. The first is it should be a little uncomfortable to them because most people are gonna squat narrow where they're comfortable and strongest, but we're trying to train their hips so we're gonna get out wider. So with your feet out, your hips should be a little bit uncomfortable. And the next criteria is your feet are wide enough so you can feel some lateral pressure going out through your shoe. Okay, if my feet are in here, there's no lateral force vector going out or horizontal. Okay, now if I come out here, now I start to feel like my foot's going to split out the side of my shoe and that's what we want. That's where the lateral force production comes in that we talked about earlier. So when you're working with your athletes, they should be a little bit uncomfortable when they first start and they need to be wide enough so that we get that pressure going out the side of the foot. Okay. The first thing, when you guys are squatting, we're gonna get your feet out here, and the first thing you need to do is reach back. We don't want you to sit down, okay? Because we talk about loading the hips and the glutes and the hamstrings. So the first thing you do is push back, and then from there, we're gonna open my knees until we're on the box. And I have to get back far enough so that my shin is still straight up and down, okay? So now we have the down part. Now to stand up, <clears throat> Drive out on your feet, okay? Don't push your feet through the floor, push out on them. So I come straight up, okay? So it's back and open, push out. Back and open, push out, okay? Now the next thing, we have the bottom half taken care of, so now we'll work on the top. With new people squatting, let them put their hands where they're comfortable on the bar, okay? So their hand width, leave it up to them just make sure they're in the middle. So I always start behind the bar, make sure my hands are even. So that way when I step underneath the bar, I'm right in the center. So I'm here. Most beginners are gonna want their hands narrow, okay? Now when I come back to the box, it should be step, step, and I'm set up ready to go. Okay, I'm not taking 20 steps going back to the box. So now I let that weight settle. The weight's gonna push me down and that force is gonna go out the sides of my feet. Take my breath in, fill my stomach up with air, and then I'm back and open and lean, push out and drive my shoulders into the bar at the same time, okay? So back and open, push out, drive your shoulders. What you'll see a lot of is people will sit and try to keep a vertical torso, and you can't do that because I can't even stand up right now because I have nowhere to push from. So what you have to do is lean forward into the squat and stay there. That's a big beginner mistake. They'll rock back, and then rock forward to come up through. We don't want to do that. So we reach and lean, straight up through it. Reach and lean, straight up through it, okay? So those are, those are the big main coaching points. As we go along and get our volunteers in here squatting, we'll get those things fixed, and then we can start to pick apart some other things that they could do better. But those are the biggest things you'll see and the biggest things you wanna focus on when teaching the squat. So at this point, we've shown our athletes what we want. We've told them why they should be doing it. At this point in the gym, we would typically let them split up and go to their racks and start squatting. Um, the progression for them at that point is they're gonna go over and take the bar for 15 to 20 reps to warm up. Once they've done that, <clears throat> we'll start them off very low on weight. Say, so with Laura here, we might have her do a 10 on each side. And as we go, we're just gonna have her do speed sets of two. So it's going to be a bunch of sets of two to work on technique and go around the room and coach everybody up. Um, and we can help them set their weights at that point. 
So what we have first is reps with the bar to warm up, put a little bit of speed weight on, and they're gonna do sets of two for however long it takes. Sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 20 minutes, but you need to get at least 80% of the group to the point where they're squatting proficiently before you move up. And that process usually took two weeks or so, and then we could start working on max effort work. Okay, but the thing is on day one, they learned the technique. So we're getting a training effect from day one in those first two weeks when they're doing speed squats, we're actually getting a training effect. Okay, they're not just learning with the empty bar. Um, so first things Laura's gonna do, go ahead and get your hands set on the bar where you're comfortable, make sure they're even. Yep, and then go ahead under the bar. Now when you go under the bar, pinch your shoulder blades together, make sure this is locked in tight, okay? Stand up strong, come out step, step where your feet should be, right? Let that weight settle. It's coming out laterally in her feet. Now chin up a little bit. Okay, next thing, fill your belly. Okay, now go ahead and squat. Reach your butt back, roll your knees open. Good, pause, good. Yep, just hit, hit. let's do 15 reps. So we'll get that warm up set we talked about. Raise your chin up a little bit, a little more. There you go. Reach back and pause, push out, drive out. There you go, keep going. We got about five more. Reach back. Now hit it hard on the way up. There, we, That was better. Drive your shoulders in the bar. There. So it's pause, drive your shoulders in the bar, drive out on your feet at the same time. Pause, drive out. There. One more. Let's get it, get it hard. Pause, fast. There you go, rock it. Okay, so good, good teaching point here. Now we have to adjust the box because they're not the same height. So Mira's gonna throw his two mats on, right? And when we were in a large group setting, I found it was easiest to set all your boxes on the lowest setting. And we actually would duct tape the pins so the athletes couldn't change them. And then we had a bunch of these mats so everybody knew how many mats they needed when they squatted. Because if you have 30 athletes in the room and they're all trying to change pins, it's very frustrating, okay? So go ahead, set your hands. Stand up strong, set your feet, chin up, fill your belly up. Reach your butt. Okay, hold on for a second. So he's good with his stance. Um, the width is okay, but we wanna move it out a little bit more. Cause as you look at him from the front, you can see he's not getting that pressure out the side. His, his shins are almost straight up and down, right? So we're gonna creep him out a little bit so he can push out better and have better, better leverages to push on the bar. There you go. Now chin up a little bit, fill your belly, and just reach and open until you're on the box. Reach and open, reach and open, reach and open. Drive your shoulders. See that pop that he just had off the box? That's when you know they've got it. So it's pause fast. See how it kind of pops off the box? When, they, when your kids start doing that, you're getting somewhere. That's good. And the reason we, he got that is because we moved his feet out a little bit so he has better leverage to push. He can actually fire his hips. Do a couple more. Okay, go ahead, rock it. All right, so now we've done the warm up set with just the bar, always warm up with just the bar, okay? Now we've done that, now we have a little bit of weight on the bar and we'll find a good speed weight for them as we progress over the next two weeks. So we're gonna start light, throw a 10 on, we'll see how this goes. We'll just do two reps from here on out, okay? Two reps on each set, yep, go ahead. Pinch your shoulder blades, yeah, there you go, stand up strong, set your feet, get out there, there you go. Chin up, fill your belly up, back and open. Pause, fast, a little longer pause. Pause, go, there you go, rack it, that was better. She got a better pause and a better acceleration because she pushed on the bar as hard as she could, okay? That's what we're looking for. Even though, even though it's a light load, push on the bar as hard as you can, okay? And that's where everybody talks about dynamic correspondence. That's what will help your athletes the most if they learn how to do that. Go from zero to very fast, very quickly. Chin up, fill your belly up. Back and open, back and open, pause. Drive your shoulders, good. Back and open, drive out on your feet at the same time. There you go, good. You're in. Now you can tell when they start to do it right because it looks easier and faster, okay? Those are your big, big indicators. Okay, so we did 110 to start on our first speed set. It was very, very easy. Um, put a little bit of weight on. You want, when you're doing this, when you're introing this, 
It should be light so they can move it fast, but your athletes should have to push on it a little bit. So we put another 10 on and we're going to see how this goes. Um, so go ahead when you're ready. Yep. Step, step, set your feet, chin up, fill your belly up. Reach it open, reach, 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 reach. Push out and drive your shoulders. Good. Pause. You're good. Pause on it. One more rep. Pause. Fast. There you go. Good. So that looked pretty good. This is probably where we would stay for her speed weight for one to three weeks, okay? Just so they can learn the movement. Um, but like you saw, she had to push pretty hard on the bar, but it had pretty good velocity. So that's exactly what you want when you're doing this. Okay, we're gonna go over a very common problem real quick. Um, a lot of times, especially with beginners when you're doing this, they're gonna sit on the box and they're gonna rock backwards into a uh, perpendicular torso position, um, which is not good. Um, a lot of people think box squatting is bad for your spine. If you do rock back, you will see more pressure on your disc at that point because the force is coming straight down through your spine. So we're trying to avoid that. That's one of the reasons. Another reason is if you sit and rock back and then rock forward again, when you rock forward, if you have heavy weights on, you're gonna get dumped forward. You're gonna get rolled over with the bar and it's not a good thing for anybody, for the lifter or your spotters. So like we talked about earlier, when you sit to the box, lean forward and stay forward. Um, but now we're gonna have Laura go and kind of show us that mistake so we can show you how to fix it because it's very, very common. So she's gonna set up just like normal. Set her feet, fill her stomach, chins up. That's it. And then they'll roll back. Yes, I'll go ahead and do a few reps and keep doing it. Okay, see, she's, go ahead, keep going. She'll sit and they'll roll back and then they try to roll back forward into it. Try not to do that, let's do two more. All right, rack it quick. All right, so to fix that problem we just saw with the rocking back on the box, um, there can be a couple issues there. Sometimes it's tight hips or a mobility issue. Uh, a lot of times it's a uh, back strength issue the athlete isn't comfortable saying lean forward because when you're lean forward, you are going to tax your back a little bit, but you're taxing the muscles. So that's what we want. So that's how you bring that weakness up. So like I said, it's a very common thing to fix that. Take the bar off the athlete. Okay. Get them over the box. And then all you're going to do is, yep, get your feet set where you would be squatting and then go ahead and squat down and just sit on the box. Yep. Just like, and stay there. Okay. So now she's in a static position and I can, manipulate her body into the position I need and she can just stay there and feel it. So I talked about the two issues, why this happens. One of the biggest issues usually is they just don't understand where you want them to be on the box. So with this, we can just sit them down, show them where they should be and fix it. And usually once they get back under the bar, they've figured it out. Okay. So if I'm looking at her, her knees are a little bit forward. So I'm going to scoot your hips back a little bit. No, keep your feet right where they are. Now just scoot your butt back on the box, right? A little more. Okay, and then her torso, she was having trouble with her torso being straight up and down, lean back. So we we're having trouble being here. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, go ahead and lean into it a little more. Now look straight ahead, chin up, arch your back. Pin nope, stay there. Pinch your shoulder blades. There you go, now lean. Lean your torso, look up a little bit. Right there is where we want you, just stay there. So I'll put them in that position and then I'll let them sit there and feel the position. Now while you're there too, Keep pushing out on your feet so you feel that pressure. Push your, push your knees out. And then just let them hold there for a second and they feel it. Okay, relax. And then we'll come back up. Go ahead and put the bar on your back. And then go ahead and let's do five reps. So usually this will fix that problem. All right, go ahead, five reps. Reach and lean, reach and lean, stay lean. Push out and drive your shoulders. There you go, good job. Push out and drive your shoulders, good. Pause, push out, drive your shoulders. Reach and lean, push out, drive your shoulders. Good, let's do one more. Good, rack it. All right, so that was good. Um, and like I said, usually that will help take care of it for the time being, but what will happen, that same athlete, when it gets heavy, they'll revert back to that a little bit, which is fine because that's what the body does. When we start to push it, it's going back to what it knows. But for the time being, you can train and have that problem fixed for the most part, but like I said, you'll probably have to fix it later on. Now, once they have more weight on, if you start seeing them rocking, usually just a verbal cue of stay forward will help with that.
All right, thanks for watching. That's how you coach a box squat with a straight bar. Next time we're gonna look at the giant camber bar and the safety yoke bar. If you're working with athletes, I highly recommend using specialty bars. We typically would only use a straight bar to teach. And then once they learn the movement, we'd switch over to the specialty bars because there's so many more advantages and it's less wear and tear on the athlete. So tune in next time and we're gonna go over giant camber bar and safety bar. Uh, if you have any equipment or training needs, please get a hold of me and Harvey at EliteFTS.net or through the website EliteFTS.com.